Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you today. Uh, I know it's always for a Palestinian to talk to foreigners about what's going on in Palestine, because usually uh, people abroad don't know uh, all the facts. Uh, the media there, the mass media, and especially in the United States, uh, they don't cover all the uh, what's happening in Palestine and uh, Israel. They usually concentrate on uh, the Palestinian reaction to the Israeli crimes. Uh, and especially in the United States, we know that. It's easier for us to talk to Israelis than Americans because Israeli media covers most of the things and uh, they are here and they know what we are talking about and they know what's going on. Uh, in order to talk about anything in Palestine, we have to remember always uh, the root cause of the events of what happened uh, in Palestine. The root cause, the starting point is that Israel occupying Palestine. And the second element, that Israel have an apartheid regime. It's not only we Palestinians call Israel an apartheid system. It's the Israeli human rights organizations, like Beit Salem last year in their report, and others, and the media, uh, many journalists in Israel, uh, they call Israel apartheid regime, and it is. And recently, the American Human Rights Watch did that, uh, last month, I think, and they said Israel has a, a, an apartheid regime. And before all this, years ago, uh, former President Carter said that, and many others. Uh, the apartheid system in Israel is uh, legal, political, economic, in all aspects, actually. Uh, and uh, the Palestinian citizens of Israel, uh, they are about 20% of the citizens of Israel, uh, they suffer the most from uh, discrimination and racism uh, because of the uh, apartheid system. On the other hand, the Palestinians like us who live in the occupied territories in Gaza and West Bank, uh, in addition to apartheid, they suffer, we are suffering from the military occupation since 1967, over 50 years. Uh, military ruling the country, uh, the laws are uh, all directed against Palestinians. So we have to remember all that. Uh, when we uh, talk about what happened in Sheikh Jarrah and Jerusalem uh, and Gaza these days. Uh, Palestinians have to explain why they are always angry against the West, mainly the American administration, the European governments. Because while we are killed every day, these leaders in the West always talk about the right of Israel to defend itself. When we hear that, we feel that they don't see us as humans or human enough to have the same right of defending ourselves. We are people who are suffering for 73 years from occupation and racism and apartheid and all kinds of uh, crimes war crimes, crimes against the humanity, massacres against children and families in Gaza and other places. What happened now, like during this month, the holy month of Ramadan, uh, Israel escalated its uh, aggression against Palestinians. It started with the Christian holiday when they prevented the Palestinian Christians from reaching the church in the old city of Jerusalem to practice this, their religion uh, holiday. This was followed by uh, Holy Ramadan for Muslims and the uh, Israeli uh, police trying to prevent Muslims from uh, going to the Al-Aqsa Mosque, uh, putting obstacles uh, in Bab al-Amud and the streets of the city to prevent people from going to pray in uh, the mosque during the most holy month in the year. And the ones who were able to enter the mosque, the Israeli police stormed the mosque and attacked them with tear gas and with rubber bullets and everything. This was going on 
the whole month while the media in America and in the West are silent, not talking about it at all or rarely. Uh, then, uh, after uh, the first week or 10 days of the uh, Ramadan month, while this was going on, the Israelis escalated more by trying to evacuate people from their homes in Sheikh Jarrah and trying to say that this is a dispute over real estate and some uh, Jewish organization had uh, a paper of ownership from 200 years ago. Or it's like a joke. Uh, first of all, why we say it's a joke and misleading to the Western who don't know? Uh, because the area of Sheikh Jarrah in East Jerusalem is an occupied territory. It's not inside Israel. It's not an ownership of real estate. According to international law, the occupying power, Israel here, is forbidden from moving their own civil citizens to the land they are occupying. This is clear in Geneva Conventions. This is clear by the resolution of the ICJ, International Court of Justice. There were many resolutions in the Security Council, General Assembly of United Nations, uh, saying the same. So it's not interior problem of Israel, it's international conflict. Israel is occupying Palestine, and these people live in occupied territory. And Israel, what are they doing? They are moving their own citizens to take the Palestinian homes in the occupied territory and to basically, it's ethnic cleansing. They are trying to remove us out and replace us by uh, Israeli Jewish settlers uh, who are coming from uh, Russia and US and Europe and elsewhere. So in inter and according to international law, this is a war crime. It's a clear, no discussion about it. It's a war crime. Even though when the US administration talk about it, they forget all this and they say, we have to talk about it and the Palestinians should stop reacting and Israel have a right to defend itself when you react. This is why we are always angry and trying to shout and cry to the whole world that we are people living under foreign occupation, colonization, and all our daily life must be covered by international law. We are protected civilian citizens according to international law, but nobody listening to us with all hundreds of resolutions in the United Nations and many conventions and treaties, even the ones Israel is part of and member of, like for Geneva Convention, Israel refuse to implement. They just refuse. Why they refuse? Because they feel, they feel that they are protected. They are immune. The U.S. administration always there to protect them and veto any resolution in Security Council and protect them from the international courts and support them and protect them and giving them the money and the weapons and every means to continue their occupation because U.S. and their allies in Europe, they use Israel as a military base to control the petrol and other things in the Middle East. We know that. Anyway, now, these days, Many, many Palestinians are killed. In Israel, how many Israelis were killed the whole month? Two, three? Because two of the Israelis, they talk about the media, they killed, they are Palestinians, not Israelis. They are Israeli citizens, but they are Palestinians. But the other Israelis who were killed, they were maximum five, mostly soldiers. On the Palestinian side, we have 210 killed and about 5,000 injured. And that's, of course, the case, because Israel uh, has Air Force, has F-16, uh, has tanks, has everything. We have nothing. Hamas organization has some basic, they call it missiles, and when they shoot like three, 400 of missiles at Israel, they kill one person or two. So there is no balance to say about, to talk about it as a war. It's not a war, it's an aggression, aggression. 
the Hamas and Palestinians in Gaza reacted to a month long of continuous war crimes in Jerusalem. This is what happened. We always say, let's talk about international law. Let's implement international law. We don't want anybody to stand on our uh, opinion uh, of the events. We don't want people to say, we just support Palestinians and all what they want. We want people to say, like elsewhere in the world, just implement the international law. Just end the occupation and let live in, in peace. But Israel doesn't want. 25 years our leadership been in direct negotiations with Israel. In this 25 years, our situation became much worse, much worse than before. Uh, Gaza under blockade, it's the biggest open air prison in the world for 15 years, prevented from everything basically. It's not a life, it's a hell, their life there for 15 years. And when they react, the West say stop. They want us to just continue living in the hell without talking or crying or shouting or try to do anything we can do to make the world listen to us and stop all these crimes against us. In West Bank, most of the land like 66 percentage is controlled by the Israelis and settlers and the rest of it, it is split like into small villages and the small towns surrounded by Israeli settlements and checkpoints we can't do anything basically we can't live a normal life like anyone else so this is why this happening all the time, not only this month. This month, because the reaction of Palestinians was strong enough to get the attention from the world. It's true we lose a lot. We lost already in six days attacks on Gaza, about 200 lives or more, and West Bank uh, already 25 killed, 21 until this morning, uh, and there are news that others uh, or were killed today, I'm not sure about that, but at least 21. And we have 5,000 injured. So until when? How Israel can get away with this? Because they feel protected by the US administration, they feel immune, uh, they feel supported, they never paid a price for all their war crimes and the crimes against the humanity they are committing commenting all the time, uh, even when Palestinians decided to go to the ICJ, the International Court in uh, The Hague, the U.S. administration pressured Palestinians not to do so. Also Europe pressured us not to do so. We just want to court, want to go to court. If this is also forbidden for us, you can imagine that everything else is forbidden for us. So we believe that Wherever there is a foreign colonization and occupation, where is, wherever there is apartheid regime, there will be resistance, and the resistance will continue. No people agree to live without freedom, to live under foreign control. So nobody can expect us as people to stop reacting, to stop resisting, to stop demanding freedom. And we hope that the people of the world, in the US, in Europe, elsewhere, support us, support the justice, support peace, support international law. We urge you just to read the facts, not to listen to, their, to your mass media, the misleading media. Even if you check the Israeli media and the human rights organizations in Israel, you find more truth than American media. There are a lot of websites, a lot of organizations, you can go to their websites and find uh, the real truth. And we urge everyone to contact their Congress people, to pressure them to act against the Israeli crimes. Uh, we want people to demonstrate, to show their support, to encourage other people to see the truth 
to support peace. This is what we want, not supporting us. Supporting us means support peace and end the occupation, end racism, end apartheid system. We hope, we always have hope, and we always optimistic that someday we'll be free and we'll get rid of the occupation and have our independent and live in peace. Thank you very much.